things up. They can go on the hello, hello, hello. Here we go. We got a Bible study today, y'all. If y'all would, when you jump online, jump online. Tell me who's online, who's with us. Excited about the word today. Excited about the word. Okay, so for the last, let me just pray. Let me open this up in prayer, and then we'll get started. Lord, we just, Father, we just give you this time, Lord. We just worship you and we praise you, Lord. Lord, we're excited in this time, Lord. We're excited because this pressure that the world is applying, Lord, it just makes us draw closer to you. And, and our Lord, that's what, it, what it, that's what we should be doing. So, Lord, I just cry out that if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't feel close, just take your cares to the Lord because he has got this. Lord, we thank you that you're our provider, you're our protector, you're our everything we need if we just keep our eyes on you and not what the world is doing. Lord, because greater are you than what's in this world. And so, Lord, we just give you honor and praise today. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you would minister, that the Holy Spirit would minister to each person like only the Holy Spirit can do, Lord. It is your word and your spirit that transforms. So we just bow to you today. We just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so we've been studying how to read the Bible. Okay, y'all give me some shout outs. How do you study the Bible? Like, okay, the first thing is you can do an overview. So what's in an overview? Y'all just shout out. The lay of the land. The lay of the land. Topography, literally. Literally, topography. That's good. Your audience. Your audience. That's good. Yep. Who the author is. The politics of the day. Politics of the day. Now, that's a good thing because that tells you a lot of some of the things they talk about may not really apply to our day. Uh, that's very freeing. Um, we talked about that. Um, then, let's see, over the date, it gives you the timeline. Was Christ here? Was Christ not here? Is this message for me personally? Um, is it for a Jew or a Gentile? There's just so many things in the overview. Then we talked about context, reading the word in context from the beginning to the end. So you don't take a scripture out of context. Um, content, looking at the content, what's the main words that are popping out? What is it about? Is it about love? Is it about discipleship? Is it about marriage? Is it about being like Christ? Okay, and then the last couple of weeks, and today we're going to camp on versions, which I call, you can have a parallel Bible. We're reading parallel versions. We'll read a line or two, and then we'll or paragraph, and then we'll read it in another version. And there's levels of versions. Of course, there's the the most formal, closest to the original wording, Hebrew and Greek, which is, and we studied Strong's. How do you find out definition of Hebrew and Greek? But in the Bibles that are example like ESV and King James, those are the more formal original version. Then we have the kind of the median, which are more like the NIV, and there was a lot of other ones in there, but just to give you a, um, an example. Mm -hmm. And then there's the freedom or the, the easy to read versions, which that's where I fell in love with the Lord, the amplified, the, um, what is it, the message, the NLT. Those are they're just a little easier to read. My husband's like, don't tell people you got a third grade level and a ninth grade level and a 12th grade level. <laughs> that's telling them they're stupid. And I'm like, well, okay, then you're calling me stupid because I like to read the third grade level because I get, it just makes such good sense to me and it's easy to comprehend. But at the same time, I like to read the most original ESV or King James so that I can kind of see. So that's what we've been doing here. We've been reading three different versions, ESV, Amplified, and NIV. And so today we've been in John. We've been reading John 14, 15, and 16. And so a little recap, because when we read the word, we're not just reading it to say, oh, we read four chapters, like that, it will do you no good. And no one that you're talking to, you want to get a nugget so you can like impart that word to someone else. Because um, it's always for you, but it's for you first and then to others. And so we'll just recount the thing I want to really camp on in chapter 14 was, um, let me see the verse. Okay, was verse um, 12, because we want to get like, what, what's the main, if I just had to say, when somebody says, well, what was chapter 14 about? What did you gain from it? So if you look at chapter 14, verse 12, and then verse 15, we're going to pull the key words out of that. All right, so chapter 14, verse 12. So if you start, let's start with verse 11. It says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father's in me. 
or at least believe, okay, I'm sorry, verse 12. Very truly I tell you, so we're in 14, 12. Whoever believes in me, so if I was reading this, I would circle, because this is key. He says, I'm going to just right out of the gate. I'm not talking to the people that don't believe in me. This isn't for the people of the world. Okay, so it's real. This is for you who believes in me. In me will do the works I have done or even greater things. Now, this is the part I want you to camp on. Verse 13 says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Okay, so what has to happen in it is so far, we're collecting data. If we're going to pray in the name of Jesus, what is the prerequisite of that? What is the requirement of that? So number one, we're seeing believe in him. That's right out of the gate. Number two is that um, you use his name. And then if you go on and he says he'll do it. To verse 15, it says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So there's a little clue. So you've got to love me and obey me. If wherever you are in that walk, there's a level to level. My obedience is not to the full level that it'll be at when I meet Jesus. He says, you're going to be sanctified until I return. So you, it's from glory to glory. So if you're walking in obedience fully to the measure of your knowing, then you're walking in obedience, okay? So don't go, I don't know if I do what my friend does. Aspire to go greater. Lord, I want to obey you to another level. That's, we're all growing. So I just want to really encourage you with that. So, so here we've, if I was taking notes, I'd write, chapter 14, 12 says, I need to believe and I need to obey. And then I get to, to ask in his name and it shall be done. And then it also says in chapter 15, we learn, so why are we, what else does he say? So that your joy may be made full. So I just did a little, so this is literally when I studied the Bible. So then I did a little error. It all leads to joy. So as I'm breaking this down, like what are we doing? It, it leads to fruit. We're going to see that in chapter 15. And why, why does our father, I mean, tell me more about the father wants us to bear good, much good fruit. It glorifies him. And it leads to our joy. So you see, we're not just praying in his name just because we're kin. Or there's a purpose in his kingdom for that. And there's requirements. These are like secrets to, to prayer life, okay? That's what, that's what I want you to see how to pull these nuggets out. So then you know, oh my gosh, okay, if these things are in order, then what happens is it builds your confidence. You're like, well, Lord, unless, unless I'm being disobedient, I'm going to call myself obedient, but I, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to show me where I'm be, if I'm being disobedient, show me so that I can perfect that, so I can lay that down, so I can correct that area. And Lord, show me, show me um, if I'm in unbelief, because I feel like a believer. Help me in my unbelief. So you see, you know how to go before the Lord so that you can pray in his name, so that he can be glorified and your joy is made full. Okay, so now if you just take 14, so that's just a little recap. And the reason I'm doing this is I want you to see how we're talking about in context, parallel, that it's building. Because now when you go to chapter 15, in chapter 15, if you look at verse 7. So we're talking here about praying in the name of Jesus. So prayer, having prayers that have fruit. Okay, so here we are in 15, 7. If you abide in me, so if I was taking notes, I'd write, okay, here's the requirement, abiding in him. And we kind of studied that last time. That's living in him, focusing on him, doing life with him, dwelling with him. And he's saying, if you abide in me, and then here's another thing, so we circle that, and my words abide in you. So if you're reading his word and you're planting it in your heart, you're memorizing scriptures, you're saying the scriptures out loud, then so you're abiding you're planting the word in your heart. Then you can ask whatever, and it shall be done. Okay, we're still in verse 7. And then if you go on to verse 11, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you. See, it's the joy of the Lord that's made full inside of us. And your joy may be full. So here he's repeating again. Okay, so, so now we know effective prayer it takes belief obedience, abiding in him, and planting the word in our heart. The, then we glorify the Lord with much good fruit, which means much good fruit means you're going to have some results. 
Your life's about to be multiplied, increased. You're going to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. That's what fruit, fruit of peace, fruit in your marriage, fruit on your children, fruit of money, fruit of time, fruit of understanding. Wisdom. It's, fruit means everything. Everything the Lord, any area that's lacking, he wants you to be fruitful. Okay, so you see how the text starts building on each other? So now we're going to read chapter 16. So that kind of brings us up. But what I want you to see is not just getting caught up in the text, but see these key, how you pull these key words out. And a lot of times as I, I'll highlight them or circle them, and then I'll go back and I'm like, oh, it's okay. That's real simple. So verse six, uh, chapter 16, we're going to read in, I'm just going to, um, let's see. Let me just read from the beginning of 16, but I'm going to camp in 16, 16. That's interesting. Okay. So 16.1, I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. Now he said a number of other things, like he's talked about um, the Holy Spirit's inside of you. He's going to be your helper when I leave. He's told you other things if we've read 14 through 16. But I'm just camping on one, one piece of what he's told you that keeps coming in the threads so that we can just attach it to prayer. And so it, it's many other things when you're reading it. And those things might pop out to you. I'm just kind of focusing on prayer, how to be more effective in our prayer life. Okay, so verse 2. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. Whenever whoever kills you will think they're service to God. And they will do these things because they have known the Father. They have not known the Father, nor have they known me. Let me read this in, uh, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to read this in Amplified. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit promised, verse 5, But now I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because of it, I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. I think I'm just going to jump on up. So I'm kind of losing track of where. Let me just jump up to stay on track. Um, let me go to 1623. In that day, you will not need to ask me about anything. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name. All right, so what, see, he's, he's done this 14 and 15. He's saying this again, but he's giving you some more nuggets. Because see, in Proverbs 25, 2, it says it, the, fa the Father hides things. But they're not from us. But it's, up to, it's God that hides it. It's up to kings to search out the matter. And so, see, we're searching this out. We saw it in 14. We saw it in 15. So he starts revealing. So here it says, if you read the Amplified, and remember we're reading parallels because I may have missed this word. It says, in my name, as my representative. A whole new revelation. So if I'm taking notes here, I've got believe, obey, abide, plant the word in my heart, use my name, and go as my representative. Like, we're not going for ourselves. We're not going on our own will. We're going to represent Christ. He will give you until, let's see, as my representative, he will give you whatever you ask in my name. Verse 24, until now you have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep asking. Okay, so here's another little clue. Don't just ask once. You're going to have to persevere. Okay, so I would write that word down. Keep asking. And I would also stop here and go, okay, ask does not mean think. Because some people say, well, I pray quietly, you know, and I just think it. Well, okay, that's great. I'm not saying that there's a time to think prayers because there are. You know, if you're sleeping at night or you're in a place where you can't be loud, absolutely. But this right here, when you ask, it is a word, a spoken word. And so a lot of people, like these little nuggets can set you free. One little tweak in your life can set you free. It live in an area of maybe you haven't seen movement. If you get one thing that you know the Lord is teaching you, and he'll highlight it, he'll highlight it. But there's a goal here. You have to ask, you have to say it out loud unto your father. You have to ask him for it. And you have to keep asking. Now, other scriptures, if I was, because I just know other scriptures, and you will too as you study them, and most people that are listening, there's a scripture that'll come up, and you go, oh, that reminds me of this. Because that's the word persevering, okay, Romans 5, 3. 
if you're walking through a trial and you're in an experience, and it doesn't have to be a trial personally, it could be a trial you're interceding for, for someone's children. I'm praying for different things for people and believing. And um, as, that, what it means here is, we were just talking about this in a prayer meeting early this morning, that, um, is it Panine? It was Hannah and Panina? Panina, right? Panina? Was that her? How do you say her name? The one that provoked her. Well, she had, so this is poor Ham, Hannah had any babies, and it said Hannah was blessed. Well, she couldn't have babies, so it didn't seem like she was blessed, but there was a reason she wasn't having babies. But, but Panina, the girlfriend who had the babies and was running her mouth, oh, I had babies, you can't. And, and she was the, the chosen one by her husband, but she was babyless. And so, um, and this is not just babies, y'all, okay? In the spirit realm, this is a lesson for area where you're not bearing fruit, okay? Let me make that clear. I'm not talking about getting pregnant. I'm talking about not bearing fruit. If you are barren, then something, if something provokes you to get angry, to travail before the Lord and cry out, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about here. That was the very gift, the running of her mouth and saying, oh, you can't have no baby. Well, then I'm going to my God. I'm about to go see my, I'm just leaving this meeting because I'm not happy. Well, it's okay to be there, but don't stay there. Use that and go cry out to your Lord and ask him because when she left, she was so high in the spirit and so tenacious in her prayers that the priest said, I'm, you look like you're drunk. And she said, I am not drunk. I've been here begging my father, talking to my father, crying out to my father. And so the priest said, it's done. She, was, she wasn't bearing anymore. So if you're taking notes, there's another key. Don't just ask one time. Don't just think it. Don't just hope for it. Write it in your prayer journal. Keep asking. Get, get right down the road. Now what I do, because I was alluding to other scriptures, is once you ask for something, I always, I always would take this to the Lord, like, well, you say, call it forth, and then you say, you already know what I need, and but you've got to say it anyway. So, like, minister to me, Lord. And so after I've asked a number of times, then I just receive it in the spirit. And then I don't just keep asking him. I just say, thank you, Father, that it is done. I thank you that, and I fill in the blank. So, you see, wherever you are in your walk, wherever you are in your level of belief, if you're asking for something that you can't really believe for, you can't really talk to the Lord in that, that area. And we all have areas that, like, I can believe in a lot of areas and then there's one or two areas where I have a little more trouble and I have to maybe call somebody to come and intercede with me. Can you pray this with me? Can you even pray it for me? Because I'm just not believing that I'm seeing anything. And so that's, that's normal. But you want to grow your faith and exercise your faith in that area. Okay, so asking, keep asking. And it says, and you will, and you will receive. Okay, you will receive. And here it says it again. We've already written this down. Why are we receiving it, y'all? Why does God want us to pray? Why do we want results? And here it is right here in Scripture. So that your joy may be full and complete. Right there. And we already know he's glorified because our fruit starts dangling and people see that we're fruitful. And listen, the way you tell that I'm a good parent is not because I just sit here and tell you so. Okay, I can tell you all day, oh, I'm a good parent. Let me tell you what I did. But I'm going to tell you who, who preaches that I'm a good parent is when you talk to my children and they say it. Or you talk to my children and say, look what my mother bought me. Or my mother came over this weekend and she spent all day moving. Or I was sick and my mother got in her car and drove to take care of me. And I could, I could do that to every one of you. It doesn't matter what we say. And this is the picture of God. When he says, I want you to bear much good fruit, God doesn't need our fruit. He owns it. He wants us to reveal his glory. And when we have fruit, it says to other people, she has a good, good father. That's how he's glorified. He's glorified when we bear fruit because it's evidence of who he is. And I just liken it to our children because we get that. And so if, if my child says to somebody else, well, let me tell you what my mom did, or let me tell you, tell you what my what Mark did, or let me t then, and you just like, yes. Then you know. And that's what God does with us. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. And then the other thing is, it provokes that person, as we were just talking about, to lean in and say, I want to know that good father. So I don't know him like that. So... Okay, so that's, we're going to close today. I'm, I've got a short one today because I'm going to do next time. Next time I'm going to teach on um, 
In fact, I'll tell y'all what to study. I'm going to teach on uh, the parable of the seed, my most favorite, favorite mm -hmm. topic. But I'm going to teach about how you read scripture, not in different versions, but you read scripture, the same parable, the same story, or the same prophecy. Okay, prophecy is usually in the Old Testament, and then it comes to pass in the New. Like in Isaiah, it says there'll be a man that'll come into the, the there'll be a man that will come and um, they'll send him to the cross. I'm paraphrasing, and he will heal you of your sickness, and he will um, pay for your sin. Okay, but then in Luke, I think it's 4:19. Then Jesus Himself fulfills that prophecy, walks into the temple, and he opens a scroll, and he says, "I have been anointed to preach the gospel." And he basically those are connected. Okay, that's pro prophesied. And then it manifests and happens. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to read where it's in Scripture in four different areas or two different areas. So I'm going to show it in the seed sowing, which is in all the Gospels. And then I'm going to show you how I found out. The, the way I did this is I found out one thing that was said in Luke that was not said in the other three Gospels. Had I not read all four I would have never found this nugget out, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, okay? So if y'all read them, I think it would be good if y'all read them, and y'all, um, um, let's see, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so if y'all would read this parable of the seed sower, and then you would try to see, is there something in each one of them that jumps off the page that may be different or not, Okay. So if you will, um, if you want to study that, that'll be great. And I'm going to show you that next time. Sometimes you may not have it in all four Gospels. Sometimes it may be in two or just three. But the parable of the seed sower is in all four Gospels. So we're going to look at that next time. So you see we're reading in versions now. But next time we're going to read when it's, the story is repeated in the same version. What is it that we can glean when we compare for example, so Matthew, Matthew spoke to the Jews, okay? His whole audience was Jews. Like you'll even see he never calls, he never says the kingdom of God ever in Matthew. He says the kingdom of heaven because the Jews, you couldn't say the word God. They would say G-D. It was like um, you weren't honorable if you did that. So he spoke to the Jews. So the way he tells the story of the parable, I'm using that as an example, but it's all, it's, it's any parable, it's any story. I'm just going to use that as an example. But then you go to Matthew, or you go to Mark, and you look at his audience, and I'm just going to give you all an example. So you get, as you're reading these, so Mark, okay, he is, he is a servant. His is a picture of a servant. And he, um, he's, he, comes, he comes from the perspective of a lowly servant. So everything that is spoken of in Mark is from that place. It's like if I told you a story, went to Disney World, and I told the story and um, you said, did y'all have fun? What rides did you ride? Then I'm going to probably tell you, yeah, I love that, you know, that bamboo shoot. And we did that one. And then it goes through the dark and the water. I love that one. And, and the, But my, my son's not going to tell you about that ride because he's going to tell you about, oh, we did the rock and roller coaster. Yeah. And that thing that turns you upside down. And his whole story is told from a different perspective and speaks to a different audience. So the way Mark would tell it is going to hit different areas. And then you take, take Luke. Now, see, I love Luke, okay, because he's the businessman. And I just, I just love it. And he's got, he talks about the women that sewed into the ministries. And so there's working women, okay, that, and you don't have to be a working woman. Like, don't, don't take this like you've got to be a working woman, okay. The reason that resonates with me is because they had money in their hands that they invested, okay. They said, let me sew into that. So that was, resonates with me when I read this. I love that. And he was more the ideal man. He came from a man's perspective. The gospel of Christ is a man. So when you read it, he's, his filter is like a man on earth and how a man operates in the kingdom of God and in the earthly kingdom. Okay, see, so every, that's why, that's why I love God. He speaks to us how we listen because something's going to resonate with me differently than it would resonate with the next person or the next, because of our, where we are in our life, what we're called to do. I just want you to get this understanding as you're reading that you might get this aha of, oh, wow, that speaks to me more because I'm that audience, okay? And then, of course, John, we know John had such a love, and he comes from, um, he presents Christ as Jehovah's son. Of course he does. 
the divine one. And, you know, it's just the love chapter and I'm the beloved. And so when, as he tells it, he would look at it from that perspective. But it's interesting because the thing I'm going to show y'all is actually found in Luke. And, and it's just kind of mind blowing to me. So y'all have an awesome week, and um, we will look at next week reading the story in different places in the same version. Okay, y'all leave me some comments, and I'll talk to y'all soon.